Awesome. Hello and half a day. My name is Lourdes Velasco. I use they, them pronouns. I am currently based in Duwamish Coast Salish territories, um, also known as Seattle, Washington. And I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you, Tiana, for inviting me um, to celebrate Indigenous Peoples Month. Um, and you know, Indigenous Peoples Day and Month is every day. <laughs> so um, my indigeneity and ancestors come from the island of Guahan, or also known as Guam. And um, I'm a queer, non-binary parent, artist. I do a lot of multidisciplinary stuff, uh, <laughs> illustration, to dance, to performing arts. Um, and yeah, it's it's been such a journey for me. I'm actually, this is the first year that actually the last few months that I've been doing my artistry full time. So it feels really wonderful to be able to explore and welcome y'all to this really fun workshop that I'm super stoked to share with you <laughs> about whale love songs and movement. Um, I'm going to pull up my, my presentation very quickly, but I would love to hear from y'all in just a second. Let me see. Please bear with me in my Zoom, the Zoomness that we have here. Where is it? Okay. Yeah, if folks want to, you can introduce yourself in the chat. I will have um, little prompts, but you could do your name, pronoun, any access needs you have, and your favorite animal ancestor. Um, it could be li living or in the past, or even a creature that you're like, I like this creature. Don't know if they exist, but they're awesome. <laughs> so yes, I would love to have folks just introduce themselves in the chat while I pull this up. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you for your patience. Sweet. Okay. Thanks for adding yourself in the chat too. I'm excited to see. And if you want to put your location as well, since I'm on the West Coast, would love to know where y'all are tuning in from. And a few little notes. We also have um, some live transcripts. So if you need closed captioning, um, you can click on your toolbar in the bottom to have that um, accessible to you. And I also like to do this in my facilitation around trying to speak slowly, um, being able to speak one at a time, as well as spelling unfamiliar words um, so that the captioning can catch it. And I will do my best to do that as well, but I think it helps us to create space in this virtual realm um, and be more accessible to everyone. Sweet, Aww. Oh, the coyote, yes, stingrays. I love it. And sea turtles, okay, this is great. As you know, like I'm going to be, <laughs> focusing a lot on whales um, today, but I'm so excited to have y'all welcome in your favorite animal ancestors. Um, there's so much we can learn from them, you know? The Mama Wata, oh, yes, beautiful. Okay, oops. So we just did this, and this little illustration is something I made of my kiddo and my dog. I love, my child's a preteen. He's th almost 13 years old. Um, and my doggo is also my child. <laughs> He's nine, almost nine. And I wanted to show y'all just a little glimpse into my life. So thank you for adding your intros into the chat. Sweet. And, you know, in every space that I like to create, I love and have learned so much from. Um, 
being in space, holding space, especially holding healing spaces. So a lot of my background and work is in anti-violence organizing um, and specifically healing for survivors of sexual violence and domestic violence. So in these spaces, we would really create ways that we can have everyone feel like they can bring their whole selves in the ways that they can, and also invite folks to participate in whatever ways feel best for them. So I really believe in collective care. I know we're in a virtual realm and space. So please take care in the ways you need. If you need to keep your camera off, that is totally fine. Um, I believe everything is an invitation. So the things that I am gonna call folks to do with me is an invitation. If you're like, no, thanks. Um, you can just observe. Observation is participation in my book. Um, I also believe in taking care of yourself um, so that we can care for each other. And, you know, that looks like rec reciprocity. There's a word in my native tongue called chamorro. It's also how we identify as people. Um, but there is a word called chinchuli. I'm gonna spell it in the chat. Um, and it means like social reciprocity. So the ways that we give, it doesn't have to match what the other gives, but it's an act of being able to give back different ways. And I really believe that's a way we can take care of one another in shared space. Um, to give y'all the breath of what we may be doing, we may not do all these things, but I just like to give people an overview so they're like, oh, I know what I'm consenting and bringing myself into. Um, there may be some little movement that you have choice around, breathing, writing. Um, we may not do small groups today, but there's a possibility for doing that. Um, listening to music and some, you know, obviously we're on screen time, so please take care of what you need. And this is a little illustration that I made of me and a dear friend, um, and it's called Friendship. And friendship is practicing care and intimacy. And I hope that this can reflect the ways and the energy that we wanna create in this space today. Okay, so a little background of like what inspired me to, to really explore um, specifically whales, and we'll get more into this around sperm whales, which have a big place in my heart. But I was very inspired by Alexis Pauling Gums, who is a Black queer writer, author, healer. And she wrote this incredible book called Undrowned, um, Black Feminist Lessons for Marine Mammals. I highly recommend getting it. Um, get it directly from the press that it was created from, um, AK Press, and I have the link there, and I could drop it also into the chat. Um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful love note, literally to every marine mammal. Um, and she writes specifically from a Black feminist framework, and it's it's gorgeous. And I it allowed me and inspired me to think about the specific marine mammal ancestors that come from the Marianas, um, where my people are from in Micronesia, um, specifically Quahan and the Mariana Islands. And after reading parts of this book, um, I learned so much about sperm whales and sperm whales are an incredible, you know, animal that moves in pods, which we'll talk more about. Um, and they actually, near Guahan um, is where they're known to like raise their calves or like start breeding. Um, but sperm whales actually live all over the world. <laughs> um, but I think in particular, one, one of my favorite stories about them that a friend back home, back in Guahan told me about is that when you go out into the ocean, sometimes you could put your ear to the water and hear the clicking from the sperm whales. And that is something that people would say you get when you know you're getting closer to the islands when you hear the welcoming of the sperm whale through their clicks. So yes, yeah, shout out to Alexis Pauling Gums. Please, if you can, um, I think her book is on sale right now for like $11 on AK Press, um, but I highly recommend it. It also, um, she's used it in the past in workshops as like a, 
kind of like a tarot deck or uh, oracle reading where you just pick a num page number and you read from it. it. It has so many beautiful, beautiful passages. So holding it right now. <laughs> Sweet. Awesome. Okay, so I love this practice. It's called creative uh, collective stretching, and it requires three volunteers. <laughs> and if you choose to, um, for folks that want to get you know be on camera, um, I invite you to volunteer to lead a stretch. And this is something that I used to do with um, some rad buds through my work at API Chaya, the anti-violence org that I spoke about or the work that I do in the past. And um, each of us would just lead a stretch that allows us to feel grounded in our body. It could be even something really simple like massaging your thumb or um, an overhead stretch, you know? So I'm curious if anyone feels like they want to share one stretch and we would do three of them together. I can share one. Yay, could you intro yourself and your pronouns? Sure, um, I'm Savannah Smith. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I work with event services at VCU coming from Richmond, Virginia. Um, I actually have a chair yoga like routine uh, posted in my office that I do sometimes. It's basically like um, the like yoga move, the cat cow, but it's in your, in your chair. Um, yeah, so basically you would just do uh, like cow would be arching your back and then um, on the exhale, you can do cow, which is just uh, the opposite. And I usually do that like two to three times depending on what I need. Um, so I guess if we want to officially start, um, inhale and you can arch and on your exhale, you can curve your back outward. And on the inhale again, arch the back. Exhale, curve. Inhale, arch for the last one. And exhale, curve. And that's it. Wow, uh, thank you so much, Savannah. That was really lovely. I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. And you're getting some love in the chat too. <laughs> Would anyone else like to lead a stretch? I'm happy to share. Um, one of my favorite, I've been learning a little bit about acupressure um, from doing some Qigong um, as well as learning from other practitioners. And there's a pressure point in between your thumb and your finger here. Um, and if you press on it, you could press on it pretty hard if you want, or it could be any type of pressure, but it's a really good one specifically if you like me, experience a lot of motion sickness or nausea. Um, it's also really good for headaches. Um, but yeah, I just wanna invite folks to just like kind of feel what does that pressure feel like in between um, your thumb and your finger in this pressure point. So I invite folks to hold a little bit of pressure on one hand and then you can breathe if breathing feels good to you. and release. And then we're going to put pressure in the same place on the opposite hand. Breathe in and out. And then you can wiggle out your hands if, you know, it will get up a little bit. <laughs> Also welcome to folks that are joining us. Um, we just started a collective stretch 
and I'm actually looking for one more volunteer, if people choose, to share one stretch that we could collectively do together. I, I can volunteer a stretch. Yay, hi, friend. Hi there, everyone. I'm right now, <laughs> I'm zooming in from a mountain. Um, wow. I'm like two miles deep on this hike in South Carolina and I was feeling um, really lonely. So mm. I thought I would zoom in. Um, and the, the stretch I'm gonna offer is inspired by these beautiful colored trees around me. Um, and they are all dropping their leaves right now and really inspiring me to think about what I might also release. So inspired by that, I'm gonna offer us the Qigong stretch kind of movement. It's not really a stretch, a shaking. Um, so whether you're just shaking a, a hand rapidly or if you're able to stand and root into the body and, and bounce up from the feet, I just invite you to shake something out right now. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, opulence. Ah. All right, friends. Yes, shaking those old stiff hips. <laughs> I appreciate y'all getting grounded in your body with me um, in whatever way that looks like, you know, like even if it's not stretching and you just wanted to witness, like there's so much wisdom that our bodies carry. Um, and to do it collectively is so special. So thank you, Savannah. Thank you, Opulence. Thank you all for um, tuning, like just sharing in this collective way of being together. Sweet. Okay. And next. Okay, so I'm really excited to share this part with y'all. So we're going to do, you know, this is not your typical workshop. <laughs> I'm just infusing a lot of things that I've learned through healing practices, through energy work that I do. And I like to combine and think about the ways that nature, right? We have so much to learn from nature. Um, if folks have read Emergent Strategy by Adrian Marie Brown and other authors, specifically talking about our connection to nature and how much we can learn to do movement work, to organize, and even just be in relationship to ourselves and the land. And I want to tie those different things in when we're thinking about Indigenous Heritage Month, thinking about um, relationships, right? We are all in relation to each other. And I think we have so much we can learn um, from our animal ancestors, like the folks that were putting um, your favorite animal ancestor in the chat earlier. If you're just joining us, you're welcome to introduce yourself, name, pronoun, any access needs, and your favorite animal ancestor. Um, but this specific portion, um, I'm actually gonna put on some sounds. <laughs> so please bear with me as I try to do that. <laughs> I'm always struggling with, um, with this goodness. Okay, so excuse my screen, but we're gonna listen to the sounds of sperm whales clicking. And what you'll learn about this is they use, sperm whales specifically use clicking as a way um, to communicate for one, but also echolocation, right? To find and hunt and find food. Um, and they have different dialects of the ways that they use clicking. One is called coda, and it's actually kind of like humans create dialects, <laughs> but they have specific clicking noises that allow them to identify who they are and also their relationships. So I want to invite folks to listen to the clicking. And I'm going to invite y'all, and you could do this without your cameras on or turning them off, but to hum sounds from your own your own body. <laughs> so we're just going to hum. I'm going to choose um, 
kind of vowels, like a range of vowels in my own indigenous language. But we're gonna listen to the clicking noises and then we're gonna tune in and listen to our own bodies in response to the sounds that we're creating. And then think about the ways that they harmonize. Think about the ways that we use communication to be in relation with each other. And I also, in particular, I want us to think and listen to the vibrations of our bodies. Um, sound and music I learned from my energy worker is an incredible way for us to find inner silence within ourselves and a silence that feels like grounded, right? So I'm gonna play this and then get back to the prettier PowerPoint <laughs> so you can see that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna spend a few minutes just like being with our voice, being with sound, and listening. Um, and again, this is an invitation. So choose to engage in whatever way feels best for you. I get a thumbs up. Anna, is that, is that, oh, great. Okay. So as you're listening to you, please click. That can travel thousands of miles in the ocean. I want to invite you to either make one sound. It could be a hum. And the idea is to think of how the vibrations in touch with different parts of your body. So it could be focusing on your eyes, your throat, how the sound reaches your fingertips. I'm going to kind of vocalize some vowels from Pichamora language, or Fino Hadza, F-I-N-O-H-A-Y-A. And I invite y'all to just join this journey and get into the deep ocean with me and join these sperm whales too. are closed like mine I invite you to come back into the space into your body and maybe just find one focal point to like feel where the energy was sent from the clicks from my voice from your own voices if you are joining in on some sound and just relish and take that in sweet. <laughs> Thank you for letting me share in that way. Um, something that I'm learning in my energy work with a wonderful teacher named Amadeo, A-M-A-D-E-O. Um, they taught me a lot about toning. And toning is a practice where you can use sound to move energy through your body. And I really think that that's very, right? Like connected to the ways that sperm wells and wells in general um, use, this specifically clicking is very specific to sperm wells, but use that as a way to communicate. And, you know, even in the depths of the water when you're not able to see, um, sound can ricochet, can bounce off of 
different parts of the ocean floor. So this can be a practice that I get, you know, like invite y'all to do on your own if you need to find ways to ground. I've been learning the bass guitar lately and um, being able to play the bass and also tune into my own body's frequencies have been really healing. And so, yeah, think of that. Think of the ways that our, we already have tools within ourselves to be able to access healing energy and to be in relationship, right? We just did an activity that we were able to commune with sperm wells, which is really rad. So thanks for doing that with me. Sweet. Okay. Oops. All right. I think it's trivia time. <laughs> So I geeked out, y'all. I just want y'all to know I was so excited. Like, there's not a lot of spaces where I can talk about whales and sing and also talk about the cool things that I know about it. So thank you for joining me on this journey of um, being super, super stoked to share fun facts about sperm whales and my islands. <laughs> so we have a poll. And I think there's actually four questions on it. Um, so yeah, can we launch this poll? Can y'all see it? Somebody just let me know in the chat if y'all can see the questions. Awesome. Okay, so the first one, and I think Tiana, remind me, they have to answer all four of them correct, to submit? I think they can do them one at a time and then we'll end it. Okay, cool, okay. So we're gonna do them one at a time based off of the flow of this. So the first one, and if you remember, I added this note <laughs> under the description of this uh, workshop. So how loud are sperm well clicks? You got to hear them, but how loud are they? So the first option is 130 decibels or B, 230 decibels, or C, 330 decibels. And there is a right answer, but it's okay if you get it wrong. <laughs> I could do some of that Jeopardy um, sound. <laughs> Uh, thanks for the laughing emoji. Um, awesome. So did folks get to answer? And do folks want to know the right answer? Awesome. Okay. So, <laughs> so um, it's B, 230 decibels. So what's really wild, right? What's wild about this one in particular is that if whales, if sperm whales were able to do this on land, it could actually kill humans. That's how loud through 230 decibels are. So imagine the decibels and the way it carries itself through the ocean. They're able to communicate with their kin, with um, other sperm whales over thousands of miles. So when I think about the ways that clicking is used for communication and echolocation, I also think for myself as this diasporic child um, from the Pacific, it's like the ways that I'm able to communicate back to like my ancestors, right? Um, in the cosmos or in the land or, you know, like, and I also acknowledge not all of us know, right? Like our direct ties to our ancestries and lands. But I think what's really powerful is to think about, wow, sperm wells exist. So my connection to my ancestors exists, right? <laughs> like the ways we can communicate and find forms of connection um, is so possible. And I think sperm wells are such a cool way to figure that out. <laughs> Sweet. So the next one, 
is how deep is the Mariana Trench? So cool fact that's not on this quiz or trivia <laughs> is the Mariana Trench is actually 124 miles away from my homelands um, in the Marianas. And I think what's really powerful, right, as we know, um, the Mariana Trench is the deepest part of the ocean and the earth, right? Um, and it's thousands of feet. I'm not gonna give away the answer yet, but it's thousands of feet <laughs> into the ocean. Um, and there's so much that we have not been able to, you know, like know about the depths of it um, and know what lives down there. But there are really cool creatures um, that I definitely invite you to check out. They're kind of, they're weird like me. <laughs> And they're really trippy. There's some trippy, creepy creatures that live in the Mariana Trench. Um, but anyway, so what do people think? Um, how deep is the Mariana Trench? Is it 16,201 feet? Is it 25,201 feet deep? Is it 36,201 feet deep? And if folks, I know you're doing it in the poll, but if you want to get, put guesses in the chat, you totally can. And think deep. <laughs> the deepest one, yes, it is C. Um, 36,201 feet. I mean, that's approximate, right? Like approximate measurement, but think about seven miles deep. So they also say that if you were to put, I don't know if this is very colonial to think of like the Mount Everest in relation to Mariana Trench, but this is an example to give y'all an idea. Um, if you were to put the Mount Everest into the Mariana Trench, there would still be like many feet um, to like equal the depth of the trench. Yes. Oh, I love that. You have to go very deep to find creatures that can compare to your beautiful weirdness. It's very true. <laughs> but yeah, the Mariana Trench is incredible. People have been able to, um, in particular, recently there was a Micronesian um, diver that got to go into the Mariana Trench. And I think what's really special, and I don't know this, you know, for a fact or what are facts anyway? Um, but my indigenous intuition um, tells me that my ancestors must have like traveled in their canoes, right? We call them Sakmans and have probably passed through the depths and the energy of this Mariana Trench. And so I have such a, an affinity, a like love, a curiosity and adoration for this trench because I'm like, that's the depth, right? Of our more people have this word called mahaling and I'm going to spell it in here and it means like to miss something to long for something for someone and I feel like that's like the depth of longing <laughs> that I have to go back home um and I actually will be going this summer which feels really exciting but yeah the Mariana Trench is incredible please check out learn more about it um and also like support movements for like you know people from the islands to be able to learn more of its knowledge and explore it. Okay, now trivia is, <laughs> we'll come back to the trivia. I feel like y'all already saw the other questions, which is really funny. Uh, <laughs> but I wanted to talk specifically about um, more cool facts about the sperm whales and their connection to the mat like matriarchy. As many people know, um, and if you don't know, that's okay, the, that pods are usually formed specifically by female whales. And for sperm whales in particular, um, there is a formation called the Marguerite formation. And it's inspired by the Marguerite daisy. So I didn't have a picture of the daisy here, but you can look at it and then compare it to how this formation is created or named after this flower, which I think is really cool. Um, I also love flowers, but that's a whole nother workshop. Um, but what's really rad about the marguerite from formation, so to back up a little bit, female sperm whales in particular spend most of their lives together and they also help raise each other's calves. 
the male like adult sperm whales usually live in you know by themselves in solitude and come up every few times to breed or whatever <laughs> but the female whales um definitely form pods of protection um to create safety and to also care for one another and what's really cool about this formation the one that you see here um on the right this little picture is the marguerite formation is when the female sperm whales create a circle around you know a, a vulnerable pod member it could be you know a pod member that has been attacked or a baby or an elder and they form around them in particular this is seen um, when killer orcas or orca whales are trying to come in and attack the calf the females will surround it and have their tails out so that they're able to like create distraction or use their tails as a form of protection and defense against any of the predators trying to attack their pod member. And what's really beautiful about this is that I think about the lineages of matriarchy, right? Like in particular, my Chamorro ancestors, you know, had a pre-colonization, right? <laughs> um, believed in matriarchy, um, we're a matrilineal society. And it's also like not to say in the past, right? Like people still practice that, but patriarchy has definitely seeped in and have made our communities forget um, the power of matriarchs in our communities. And so I wanted to pay homage to my grandmothers and you see them on the screen here. Um, the person that has a plate is my paternal grandmother, Anna. And on the right is my um, grandmother Lourdes, who I'm named after is my namesake. Funny story, she was upset that no one was named after her. Lourdes is actually my middle name. My mom's like, okay, and you know, my chosen name now. <laughs> She's like, okay, like we can name my child's middle name after you. <laughs> but I feel like my grandmother, Lourdes in particular, has like a really strong bond, even though both of them, you know, have passed and are in the afterlife. Um, this is like a, a really, like a photo of them together which I don't have many of. And I met my paternal grandmother on the left, um, Anna, when I was a kid, so I don't have very many memories of her. But the context of this photo, which is really funny, is this is my baptism. Um, I grew up in a very Catholic household, which is another story, right? <laughs> and I'm like actively decolonizing a lot of those things that, um, that I've learned through Catholicism. But um, both of my grandmothers were there and what they're doing in this photo that I you don't have context for is they're at the table they're at like my grandma has a plate because she's fanning the table from flies <laughs> she's protecting the food um, and my other grandmother <laughs> is also there being witness to be like okay make sure that this food is ready and prepared so I think it's really beautiful to think about the ways that you know like matriarchy shows up right um when we see this marguerite um, formation and like how that's mirrored even in this like small gesture right of my grandmother my grandmother's protecting the food of my baptism <laughs> um and in the background um it says matriarchal migration so this is actually a humpback whale with its calf um, and I wanted it to mirror like my grandmothers and the ways that they practice care, the ways that they practice protection in, in little ways, right? Um, and also to honor, you know, like they also weren't perfect, right? Like, <laughs> like they, I know that my parents are still healing things um, like the mother wounds and things that I've also inherited too. But I wanted to like bring back this idea of, um, not just an idea, right, a, a practice um, a way of being, um, a way of being in communion with each other by honoring the matrix in my life and seeing how that mirrors, right? The ways that whales, sperm whales in this pod um, create connection, create community, create interdependence um, by feed, you know, letting calves suckle other female um, sperm whales for instance, <laughs> like they're able to feed each other's children, right? And this is another reflection of the ways that my grandmothers also did that work. Yeah, shout out to our foremothers. And I also, you know, wanna give love to like our queer and trans communities of like 
The ways that matriarchy can also look and not be gendered specifically to grandmothers and mothers, but like the ways that mothering in itself um, and nurturing and care is practiced in our queer and trans communities too. And um, another book by Alexis Pauling Gums, uh, she edited this book, but it's called Revolutionary Mothering. And it's really beautiful. I also recommend, it's like an anthology of different writers, but it also pays homage to the ways that black, brown and queer and trans communities have practiced mothering um, in so many different ways. So another book I recommend. Oops. Okay, oops. Didn't want that to play yet. Sweet. How are folks doing? Do you need? I know that we have a pretty short time together, but does anyone need a break? Do you feel good about moving forward? This next portion is going to be an invitation of movement, um, but also an option if you want to like just watch this like beautiful video of uh, sperm wells and them welcoming a baby cat. It's so cute. Um, but yeah, how do folks feel? Do you feel good about continuing? Okay, cool. Looks like folks are excited to click. <laughs> Rad. Well, you know, if you want, please take care um, in the ways that you need. Um, and thanks for these beautiful affirmations, y'all. Sweet. Okay, so this portion is about movement and whale songs. Um, we got to listen to the clicking of sperm whales. We got to learn a little bit more about um, the matrilineage of sperm whales. And I wanted to encapsulate that through dance and movement together. And you get to, one of my favorite things, and some folks are in this space have been in my workshops, where we pair music with um, nature videos. And one of my favorite ones is like watching volcanoes erupt, like the sacred volcanoes erupt and like having slow-mos and putting music over it um, for this one in particular, or even mushrooms, like bioluminescent mushrooms are also, I nerd out about those, um, putting music over time-lapse and sped up videos of mushrooms <laughs> dancing. Um, but this one is so sweet. It's like I said, um, this pod that's welcoming a new baby into their pod and just like observe the joy, observe like the ways that sperm wells are just like also like, like to communicate through touch and being next to each other. And I think that's something really special that, you know, I'm still learning around touch and I'm still learning around um, affection and intimacy that there's so many ways that, um, our sperm whale ancestors can mirror and teach us um, about intimacy. So the soundscape that you're going to listen to is actually one that I created for a museum in Long Beach um, called Payam. It's a Pacific Islander museum in Long Beach, and it's a group of Chamorro artists, um, including myself, were able to contribute different mediums around our connection to home. And since I've been exploring more and more about whales and um, my love for them, I created a soundscape that includes chant, so la la, kind of like what we did earlier, um, the sounds and clickings of the sperm well, as well as you'll hear different odes to different whales. So there's some humpback sounds. There's also the orca. Um, I wanted to include the orca because here in the Salish Sea, there's actually two pregnant orca, which is so exciting, right? Um, and they have this beautiful museum in one of the islands um, near the San Juan Islands. And they track like all of the different pods for generations that lived in the Salish Sea here. And so it's a big deal. And one of um, a native, answer, native elder, sorry, um, she told me about dedicating anything I do to whales to the, the life of these beautiful calves that will be um, born because of how sacred orca are um, here in the Salish, Coast Salish lands. And because of, you know, humans, as well as um, noise pollution, so many of the orca in the Salish Sea have, have died um, or gone lost or missing. And so it's a big deal to have these two pregnant orcas um, 
be cared for, be nurtured, um, so that they can bring on future generations of orca. Um, and you can follow them. I think this pod is specifically called the J Pod. Um, but look it up, Salish Sea J Pod, pregnant orcas, exciting. <laughs> so, yes, I'm excited to invite you to move um, this next portion. You're welcome to move. I invite folks to think of elements. So, if you want to, you can move like the water. You can also mirror the movement of um, the whales. But the idea is just to get in tune with the sound, immerse yourself in the sound, in the visuals, and also your body. So yeah, we're gonna take a few minutes to just get embodied. Oops, all right. Awesome. My video is from Wellzone. I had to include that. <laughs> um, yeah, if you moved or if you just witnessed and watched, um, would love to hear like how that felt in your body, um, you know, or any experience you had in response to the video, the sound or movement. And I welcome folks, if you want, you can turn on, you can speak through, speak through the Zoom <laughs> or chat um, or get off camera if you want, Any anything that feels good. Hi, I'm Adriana. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. Um, just watching the video for me, it was just unexpectedly calming. I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect, but I don't know. My body just kind of relaxed and just felt calm. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, thanks friend. I'm so happy. That was one of the hopes was some calmness. <laughs> How about other folks? Hi. Um, yeah, I, I felt a, like in touch with kind of the element of water. 
while that was happening. And um, with that, I think felt like a, a sense of really great presence, like being in the moment with the music, which was really nice. So thank you. Mm, thank you. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I think that the water element too is definitely something that makes me feel really calm, being near bodies of water in particular. Mm. Leading from the chat, it was so moving and moving my body along with the sound made me tearful and I don't know why. It just felt all, it just all felt moving in a beautiful way. Oh, thank you. I felt a lot of watery energy through flowing through my body too. Wow, thank you all for sharing these reflections. Um, I totally agree, I think. And like letting the tears flow if you get tearful is like something I invite um, because, you know, we have so much water in us. <laughs> and there's also this like really sweet, you know, union that we're also seeing in this, in this film. Um, and I think being able to allow all of our senses to come alive in this experience. I love immersive kind of experimental <laughs> um, things like this that allows us to like tune into all the different senses. Um, so yeah, please take care in the ways you need like after this workshop, um, if anything comes up because it is tender. <laughs> and I feel like, you know, in this work, in this world, I also know through like, you know, institutions like universities, sometimes like the pace of it, right? Um, or even work and living under capitalism. Um, it's, it's hard for us to tune into our bodies. So I'm learning that as I slow down, that's when I feel more. Um, so yeah, take care in the ways you need. And I also invite you, like my kiddo loves this, um, it's like a YouTube video on, on YouTube, obviously, <laughs> uh, but it's like bamboo water running for like 10 hours. And you can just play it and play it. And in the past, he struggled to fall asleep. And so we would just play it. Um, and it was so calming. So yeah, there's so many different tools we could use, um, even on the interwebs that can bring um, stillness, that can bring our bodies into this calm state. And if, you know, if we don't have access to water, what are other ways that we can be connected to it? Awesome, thanks for joining me in that, everyone. Feel free to add more chat, um, love to you. Okay, back to our fun trivia. <laughs> Okay, so I'm actually going to play the sound for y'all because you don't know what the sound is yet. Um, let me get in here. See, let me, okay, so there's a poll. And okay, so I'm going to have y'all listen to it's called the bio twang. So this sound was a mysterious sound that scientists were able to pick up. Um, I'm like, why isn't it letting me? do this, but it was actually a sound in the Mariana Trench. <laughs> and they were like, what is the sound? It is like electronic, it's mysterious. It's like, what is it? <laughs> so um, I know I'm like building up this and I'm struggling with my, okay, let's see. Hopefully my computer lets me play it. Ah. Oh, there it is, okay. Well, that's not it, sorry. Oh, look at that. Listen to this. <laughs> Is it playing? Okay. It'll play again in just a sec. Okay, so isn't that weird and cool um, and mysterious? It kind of sounds like, I don't know, some cool like trippy house music. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, electronic sound. So what do y'all think? Who did scientists believe that created this bio twang? Um, the baleen whale, beluga whale, or the goblin shark? 
and I put little cute pictures. The goblins, you know, cute can be relative. It's kind of scary to me. <laughs> but the goblin sharks are found in the Marianas, and it's pretty cool. Uh, oh, thank you, Audrey. Any guesses in um, the chat? <laughs> B, A, we got A, we got B. So it is A, a baleen whale. They believe that it's a whale um, that created the sound. So you were right, Tiana. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, really cool, really trippy. I actually made a soundscape that included the sound in it. <laughs> but I think it's really cool um, that they were able to capture this like thousands and thousands of feet um, in the ocean floor, right? Um, or catch the frequencies of it and the sound of it. Okay, I have another. <laughs> I think a lot of people already left at this one. Uh, <laughs> so thinking about sound, right? Sound waves are incredible. Um, I actually learned this from my energy worker, but lithotripsy um, is, is a form of, um, a, you, they use sound waves in particular, like high energy sound waves um, to break up what? A, with him, B, kidney stones, C, pimples. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to just keep this fun <laughs> alive. <laughs> okay, so we got with him. <laughs> if people are looking up to break up with him, you could use Lizzo Tripsy. <laughs> um. <laughs> So the answer is B, it's kidney stones. Um, as a person who had kidney stones before, I wish I knew this was an option because <laughs> kidney stones are painful. Um, but see the power of sound waves, you know? I mean, actually I, I could imagine all of these options could be true, um, A through C, <laughs> but specifically lithotripsy is used um, to help break up kidney stones. And so why am I sharing this? Why is this a part of the trivia? I just think it's really cool when we're thinking about from sperm well echolocation clicks to how sound waves travel in the water to using sound waves and high energy sound waves in particular to break up kidney stones in our body. Pretty cool. Sweet. Um, Tiana, can you give me a time check? Yeah, so we have about 25-ish minutes. Awesome. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking that trivia with me, y'all. I guess we can post the results. Do you want to submit them and just see what people, <laughs> what people thought? Can y'all see it? It should be sharing. Okay, I don't know if I see it on my end. Let me see if I can stop sharing very quickly. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I agree. I feel like 22% of folks like break up with him was, um, was an answer. I really respect that. <laughs> a lot of people knew it was kidney stones. That's cool. Yeah, the, the toss up between the beluga whale and the baleen whale. Wow. Also, belugas are one of my favorite whales because they're so silly. They're so cute. Um, very playful. 
yeah, a lot of people did guess um, between the 25,000 and 36,000 feet um, in the Mariana Trench. And um, folks thought that, you know, majority of folks thought that the sperm whale clicks were louder. Um, I mean, imagine if they were even louder. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Thanks for, yeah, just having fun with me in that. Okay, so for our last activity together, um, I really loved, I learned this from my dear friend um, in Setlu, which means uh, sibling, Monica, um, or also Nake, I will spell their name in the chat, but they're also a queer Chamorro um, artist and organizer, and they do a lot of powerful work specifically in Guajan and the Marianas um, to combat US militarism and um, fight for sovereignty over our island. And for a lot of folks that may not know, um, Guam and Guajan is considered a US territory and unincorporated. Um, and a lot of our people, you know, including my parents joined the military and as a way, you know, feeling like it's the only means they could leave the island. But Monica has been a really powerful force back home, you know, as a queer artist and activist um, to fight against the desecration of our lands, particularly from um, the US military. So there's been a lot of um, resistance and pushback to the US military taking over sacred lands for firing ranges, for instance, or, um, and just to think about it, to give you all context, our island is really small. Um, it probably takes like an hour and an hour and a half to get one point to the other um, from the, the north to the south or vice versa. Um, but the, mil the US military um, occupies one third of our land. And that's a lot of land that we don't, as, as indigenous people of the land, um, don't have access to, right? And a lot of the lands that they do have are sacred sites. Um, so when I think about this, and I like to invite folks to think about, um, you know, why does the U.S. still have colonize, you know, these colonies, right? Um, a lot of it is because of specifically for war. Um, and there's a whole history around that, around Guajan and the Marianas and the Northern Marianas in particular. Um, and there's, there's a lot of it that we still feel in our land, you know, um, the remnants of war, the impacts and the trauma of it. And so there's a lot of powerful organizing right now um, to work against the militarization of our land so that we can be sovereign. And we look a lot to Hawaii, um, to their movements. Um, the lot, there's a lot of powerful organizing in the Marshall Islands, um, which are also siblings in, the, in Micronesia. Um, I don't know if folks are familiar with the Kini Atoll, but they have experienced so much nuclear warfare um, that still continues to impact their communities today. So yeah, I definitely invite y'all to learn a lot about our Pacific Islands, um, in particular Micronesia. There's also Melanesia, Polynesia, right? Um, um, again, also umbrella terms for our people, but um, there's a lot of history there and the ways that the US has impacted our lands and how we're also actively fighting around against a lot of this climate chaos <laughs> and change um, that we know will definitely and directly impact our people and the lands with rising um, tides and the sea. And yeah, there's a lot there. So what gives me hope is like thinking about the ways that we're in relation to land, to our animal ancestors, to the water. And when we go back to those roots of connection um, and relationship, um, so much can happen from there. So much change, so much love so much healing can happen um when we're in relation to all beings so so thank you for listening to that um i wanted to invite folks this is something that monica taught me um and i love that i brought them into this space but they love to do poems together so what they ask folks and what i'm going to ask of y'all if you choose is to write a line and in particular a line or a love note to our well ancestors since we've been talking about them. And at the end, when folks are done in the chat, we're gonna read it as a collective poem. So it's really special. It doesn't, you know, like 
just right from your stream of consciousness. Um, but it could be just one line that you put into the chat as an homage, as a love note, as a love song to our well ancestors um, based on what you learned today or what you're carrying in your heart. Um, one example I put is thank you for reminding us how to form pods of care. So yeah, I will give y'all a few minutes um, to reflect and to write into the chat. Um, a little love note to our well ancestors. And I will try to play some music in the in-between. Let me see if I can find some whale tunes while people are doing that. Today's sound Ooh. is brought to you. <laughs> that was not supposed to be bad. <laughs> Do folks need a few more minutes? There's time. So. Marie, Tonkin, Sarah, Kamatsu, Sina, Nam. 
Mitchell, Jeffrey Anderson, Kamatsu, Sikutaku, Inan and Lenaku, Marie, Kuru, Mary Kalu, Fihu, Kuru, Krisa, Hadingu, Imanga, Faku, Bafanyaku, Zema, Poksai, Zuki, Salabu, Tatai, Huma, Lefa, Gene, Manu, Ihakaku, Atsuka, Amanu, Tsuku, Tuna, Itata, Hotta, Samuna, Tuma, Lefa, Iza, Hulu, Nakangata, Etu, Hulu, Lefa, Lanu, Eni, Nakangaku, Hulu, Hutu, Ili, Nala, Dani, and then Ili, Sato, Sahu, Hulu, Kitanu, Hirani, Nakangaku, Sia, Tuma, Talani, Tu, and Lala, Taki, Maku, Mai, Lamo, Kitani, Matu, Hapi, Maku, Isaru, Gene, Patsoku, Mana, Skelen, Aku, Sasu, Huma, Munti, Nui, Tata, Pudin, Tatu, Tengen, Unta, Yaka, Hama, Dai, Maku, Maku, for these beautiful poems. <laughs> um, the song that just played was one of my Chamorro queer um, relatives, Dakota. Um, yeah, she makes me happy to hear my language and share it with y'all. So to close, we're going to do our collective poem. And I was curious, how do folks feel about, um, you know, if you choose, you can read your line or would you like me to read it in its entirety? You can respond on the chat or, um, yeah, I was curious because I would love to hear people, um, you know, say their piece if they wish. And if not, I'm happy to speak it into the space on behalf of everyone. Awesome. So there's some love to read it all. I'm happy to do that. Yeah, and if folks still are writing, um, sweet. Feel free to keep writing into the chat. Oh, y'all are so lovely. <laughs> I'm happy you still like my voice. Okay, this is great. <laughs> so yes, so we're calling in um, our well ancestors, the water, um, the ancestors we wish to be here with us um, and to close this beautiful like learning together you know like ceremony um, I'm really excited to recite this whale love poem that we collectively wrote together thank you for reminding us that there's strength in community and that we don't have to do it alone 
For as long as you roam and sing songs, I promise to remain. Thank you for showing us how love and community care can cross illusions of space and time to inspire species all around you. Dear well ancestors, thank you for teaching us interdependence, that I can form pods of care, ask for what I need, and have my child raised in communities of love. Dear well ancestors, the tears I shed today reminded me of sacred water, so necessary to life, and reminded me of your love and care throughout my life. Thank you for reminding us how to move with respect and respect the earth together. Wow. So I invite us to take, you know, maybe three breaths if breathing feels good to you. If it doesn't, you can like focus on an image in front of you um, that I'm going to take a few breaths just to honor like what was shared. So inhale and release. One, two more breaths, inhale, fill your belly with air, release. And on this final breath, just remember all of these beautiful messages and bring them to your heart. Um, send them off to loved ones that you wish and back to our well ancestors. So inhale, And release. Wow, we just wrote a poem together. <laughs> um, thank you all so much. I know we still have some time. So if folks like want to stay on and ask questions, and we have like five more minutes, um, but I just wanted to show y'all ways to stay connected. I am on Instagram, um, attender Virgo. Also have a Patreon that you're welcome to join or tell people in your life that want to support artists. <laughs> um, but sign up maasi, that means um, gratitude from the ancestors, um, gratitude to you. And I'm also dedicating this uh, specifically to trans ancestors in my life who have passed this, this year, this past year. Um, Lucia Leandro Jimeno, Constance Blakely and Rihanna Quickly um, are all trans, trans women, trans non-binary folks, trans fluid people, um, black and brown who have passed um, and are now ancestors and guiding me in so many ways and loving people in so many ways. And so I just wanna dedicate um, this session with y'all to them um, for a lot of the knowledge that they've passed on to me um, and for their presence and protection in my life. Um, so yeah, thank y'all so much. Sign up my And yeah, if folks want to chit chat uh, for the last five minutes. I'm happy to to chat with y'all. But if you have to go, like blessings. Um, so much gratitude for spending time today with me, um, with our animal whale ancestors. Um, through music, through movement and reflection and writing. Um, yeah, I would love to partner with y'all in the future. If there's any other ways to stay connected, um, please let me know. <laughs>